Hello everybody, welcome to Joe the Lawyer. Today we are going to take a look at the search warrant that was used in the Alec Baldwin shooting. The warrant is for the structure, the building, uh, where the Rust movie was being shot and directed and it's also the scene where Mr. Alec Baldwin accidentally shot a female cinematographer and she died. Another person was also shot. We're going to run through this search work. We're going to break it down uh, and see what insight we can gain about how the case will go going forward from the search warrant. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Those are free ways to support the show. The show will all Always remain free. Also, consider signing up for my email list. You get a free PDF on what to do when pulled over by the police. Um, you can find the link to that in the description. All right. So many of you may have seen my prior video where I predicted that Alec Baldwin would be charged criminally. I do believe that the evidence is there to charge him criminally based on what I know. I haven't read this search warrant yet. That doesn't mean the prosecutor will do it, all right? They may decide in prosecu prosecutorial discretion not to pursue criminal charges against him. However, I'm sticking with my earlier prediction that they will. And the reason for that is because there was negligence, there was recklessness here, and that is enough to be criminally charged under an involuntary manslaughter statute. Um, I did look into some other cases where people died on movie sets. There was one, uh, it happened 20 years ago or so, where there was a train accident in a, in, a, in a movie scene and two children and an adult died and they prosecuted the director and the director was found not guilty. Also, there was the Brandon Lee shooting where Brandon Lee was shot on a set in an incident similar to Alec Baldwin's case and no charges were filed. So it seems that I'm against history here, but I'm sticking with it because there, are, in my opinion, there is gross negligence here. And I do think that there is enough to charge probably multiple individuals on the set, but perhaps even Mr. Baldwin himself um, only because uh, he he should have used certain safety practices before pointing that gun and pulling the trigger. Let's look at the search warrant here. Okay, so this first page here describes what they are searching, right? This is a requirement of a search warrant. A search warrant has to be particular in its details. It doesn't have to say everything about a case, but enough to justify that the warrant should be granted because a judge is telling the police, you now have legal permission to go in here and search. It's a big deal, especially under the Fourth Amendment of the United States of America, which protect, protects people against unreasonable search and seizure. A wooden fixed structure, gray-brown in color with a pitched roof and a cross on the roof. Front of the structure faces west, has four medium-sized windows facing north, two medium-sized windows, one small-sized window facing east, and four medium-sized windows facing south. The location is at 545 Bonanza Creek Road, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Apparently, this this is it's, it's kind of like a church-like wooden structure, and it's been used in a lot of movies. All right, before we dig a little deeper, everybody, this is my first cup of coffee of the day. You know, the first sip, the first cup is just fantastic. Ah, really good. All right, let's scroll down here. Um, and this part here is a little boring. It's just the, the judge saying that they're being granted permission to go in. Um, it does it does say you have to go between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Search warrants can't be unlimited. And a nighttime search can take, spe can take special authorization. All right, but what we really want to get to is the contents of the search warrant because this will... Um, this will show, this is the reasons that the police cited, that law enforcement cited in order to justify going in there. All right, these are the items that they're looking for, but let's talk about, let's go here. Investigation conducted. Let me see the rest of the search warrant. This is the fun part. So we're going to run through this. On Thursday, 
October 21st, 2021, Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to 545 Bonanza Creek Road, Santa Fe, New Mexico, in reference to an incident regarding a gunshot trauma. Santa Fe Regional Emergency Communication Center advised a male was accidentally shot by a prop gun and it was unknown if it had been a live round used. Remember, a male and a female ended up being shot. Upon arrival, Deputy Nicholas LaFleur advised one female had been shot in the chest and one male was shot in the shoulder. The female was identified as cinematographer Helena Hutchins. She was transported via helicopter to the University of Mexico, New Mexico Hospital in Albuquerque, New Mexico for further medical care. The male identified as Joel Souza, who sustained a gunshot wound to the shoulder, was transported via ambulance to Christus St. Vincent Hospital in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Upon arrival, a affiant, and the affiant is the officer who is writing this document. The location of the incident was inside of, affiant learned, location of the incident was inside of a structure located at 545 Bonanza Creek Road. GPS location is listed. Affiant learned the firearm used during the incident was secured by arriving deputies along with the ammunition. So some deputies arrived on scene shortly after, secured the firearm. During the filming of the movie, the assistant director, Dave Halls, grabbed one of three prop guns that was set up by the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez. Hannah Gutierrez is going to really be looked at. So is Dave Halls for law enforcement in this case. Dave, Dave Halls grabbed one of the three prop guns set up by the armorer, which was on a cart. The cart is a gray in color rolling table with two layers and was left outside of the structure due to COVID-19 restrictions. That's an interesting fact right there. I'm going to stop right there, okay? Because if it's outside, there's going to be a lesser degree of supervision over what is on the cart. And I'm sure all of you have seen a cart like this. I picture it. I was an F-15 mechanic when I was in the Air Force another lifetime ago, and we pushed carts around like that. So I have an exact image in my head of this this cart. There's a top layer, and then there's a bottom bin, and items can be placed on both, both the top and the bottom. Affiant learned, again, this is the deputy or the officer, learned one of the prop guns was then grabbed, oh, yeah, okay. A fight learned one of the prop guns was then grabbed by the assistant director and he took it to the actor identified as Alec Baldwin who was inside of the structure. As the assistant director handed the gun to the actor, Alec Baldwin, Dave Hall's assistant director, yelled, cold gun, indicating the prop gun did not have any live rounds. The prop gun was fired by the actor, Alec Baldwin, striking the cinematographer identified as Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza, who was behind the cinematographer. Affiant later learned the assistant director, Dave Halls, did not know live rounds were in the prop gun when he had given the prop gun to the actor, Alec Baldwin. All right, let's scroll up. Affiant learned what had happened. Ooh, sorry, you guys can't see that part. Okay, there we go. I'm starting at the top paragraph. <laughs> Affiant learned the assistant director did not know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Affiant learned what had happened to the prop gun once it was fired. The prop gun was handled by the armorer, identified as Hannah Gutierrez, and given to the assistant director, Dave Halls. The armorer was given the prop gun after it was fired by Alec Baldwin. She then took the spent casing out of the prop gun. When def deputies arrived on scene, the prop gun was handed to arriving deputies by armorer. Affiant learned the actor Alec Baldwin was wearing old Western-style clothing during the filming of the movie. Given the fact that Alec Baldwin was wearing old Western-style clothing during the filming, he changed into street clothes prior to leaving the scene, and the items were turned over to the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office evidence technician. The clothes appeared to have bloodstains. Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office evidence technician learned a Western style coat was left inside the structure. It is important to gather any trace evidence, residue, or biological specimens that might be related to the incident. A fiant learned the incident occurred in close proximity, which can lead to transfer of evidence. So blood could have been splattered onto the Western style clothing. 
um, uh, gunshot residue would also be left on the clothing. A fiant was informed the prop gun was properly secured in a marked patrol unit along with other prop ammunition. The gray in color two-tier cart containing a western style belt and additional prop ammunition was secured, which was secured by responding deputies. All right, let's scroll up here. The cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, who sustained a gunshot wound to the chest, was later pronounced dead at UNMH. Cheers. Well, not to that. Cheers to her life, a life well lived. On Friday, October 22nd, at approximately 1 p.m., I made contact with Joel Souza, who sustained a gunshot wound. Upon making contact, I did observe a visible injury to his right shoulder. Joel was given the opportunity to give a statement regarding the incident that occurred. Joel stated that the workday started at approximately 6.30 a.m. He went on to say the crew usually meets and has breakfast on the property. During the morning hours, the day started off late due to a camera crew that had quit, and they had to find another camera crew to help film the movie. Joel said once they hired another camera crew to assist, the day was taking longer than usual because they only had one camera to do the filming. Joel was asked about the employee's behavior and he said everyone was getting along. There were no altercations that took place to his knowledge. And the police may be asking that to see if there was perhaps some ulterior motive here in the shooting or just to gain a general sense of the environment on the set. Joel stated that because of his job, he was more concentrated on the monitors of the cameras and screens. He did state that no film was being recorded because the crew was working on getting the scene ready for the movie and how they were going to set up the camera that was available to them. Joel said he was standing beside Helena Hutchins viewing the camera angle on camera lens. The rehearsal took place inside the church building where Alec Baldwin was sitting on a wooden pew facing south towards the camera and crew. Joel said the rehearsal entailed actor Alec Baldwin cross-drawing his weapon and pointing the revolver towards the camera lens. According to Joel, it was his belief the gun being used in the rehearsal was safe and used the term cold, cold gun when explaining the firearm safety announcements. He said he remembered the phrase cold gun being said while preparing for the scene. Scroll back up. Joel explained what he knows about firearm safety. He said what he knows is three people had been handling the guns or firearms for the scenes. He said the firearms are checked by Hannah, who is the armorer, and then the firearm is checked by assistant director Dave Halls, who then gives it to the actor using the firearm. I don't know if it was checked this time. Joel said as far as he knows, no one checked for live ammunition on their person prior and after the scenes are being filmed. The only thing checked are the firearms to avoid live ammunition being in them. Joel stated there should never be live rounds whatsoever near or around the scene. Why would there be live rounds? Joel explained that prior to the discharge of the firearm by actor Alec Baldwin, they had been working on preparing for the scene before lunch. Joel said they broke for lunch around 1230 and had to be shuttled to an area away from the set to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Joel advised they return back to the set after lunch, though he is not sure if the firearm was checked again. Joel stated they had Alex sitting in a pew in a church building setting and he was practicing a cross draw. Joel said he was looking over the shoulder of Helena when he heard what sounded like a whip and then loud pop. Joel then vaguely remembers Helena complaining about her stomach and grabbing her midsection. Joel also said Helena began to stumble backwards and she was assisted to the ground. Joel explained she was bleeding from the shoulder and he could see blood on Helena. Once I completed my interview with Joel, I made contact with Reed Russell, who is identified as a cameraman who was standing next to Joel and Helena at the time of incident. While speaking to Reed, he stated he arrived early to eat breakfast on the day of the incident Reed told me he had much work to complete due to a camera crew of about six individuals walking out. Reed stated the camera crew was having issues with production involving payment and housing. Reed also said the camera crew had walked out on the film, wrote a letter to production on disagreements. Reed said while he was working with the camera in the setting for the movie, he had stepped out for about five minutes before returning from lunch. 
He said when he had returned back into the setting, Alec, Joel, and Helena were already in possession of the firearm and had been preparing for the scene. He was not sure if the firearm had been checked due to his absence of the five minutes. Reed went on to say that while setting up his camera, there was no video or audio being filmed as it was just preparation of the scene and setting. Reed said while preparing, there was a shadow coming from the outside light and they had to move the camera at a different angle from Alec. He said Alec was trying to explain how he was going to draw out the firearm and where his arm would be at when the firearm was pulled from the holster. Reed was not sure why the firearm was just dis was discharged and just remembered the loud bang from the firearm. Reed said after the firearm was discharged, he remembered Joel having blood on his person and Helena speaking and saying she couldn't feel her legs. What a terrible and tragic scene that must have been. Reed stated once Helena was on the ground, medics began to treat her injury as she was bleeding on the floor of the building they were in. Reed was asked about the behavior of the people involved in the setting of the scene. He said everyone seemed to be getting along. He was asked about Alec and the firearm and how he handled it. Reed said Alec had been very careful and had brought up an instant when a scene was being filmed earlier. Reed said Alec had made sure it was safe and that a child wasn't near him when they were discharging a firearm during that scene. On October 22nd, detectives executed a search warrant <clears throat> at the address. During the execution, they did find blood in the area where the incident took place. The incident where a firearm was discharged and two people were wounded and bleeding. The findings in that warrant corroborate statements about the injuries in the incident that took place. Often crime scenes will have multiple warrants issued over a period of time. And it's just so law enforcement can make sure that when they're doing the search that a defense attorney like me <laughs> can't come back later and say the search was illegal. So they get warrant after warrant after warrant. It's good police work what they're doing. A fine is aware additional evidence might be located on the prop gun used while the filming of the movie. Additional review will be required of the film captured during the scene. So there's going to be, there's film of this. As well as cameras, digital cameras, and film or memory cards used by cameras. A fine learned a rehearsal was taking place and equipment for filming was at the scene. Due to filming equipment being at the scene, a fiant would like to confirm if the incident that took place was or wasn't recorded. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't read yet if there was, if there, if um, anything like that was 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 recorded. Um, so the rest of this is pretty stock language, arguing that they have probable cause and that the warrant should be granted. Um, I don't think any too much new information was brought out here. Um, you know, a couple of things that I had heard, and these are the items that are to be seized, photographs, video cameras, computer hardware, they're going to gather everything at that scene. You know, one of the things that, that had been stated earlier was that the camera crew had walked out and, and it appeared to me that in that letter they wrote, one of, the, one of their concerns was the safety of the set and specifically involving firearms number two you know this this individual reed stated in, in his statement that alec baldwin had been careful had moved a kid around that's going to help alec baldwin at least when it comes to the police deciding whether or not to file charges the most interesting p fact that i found in this search warrant is the fact that the cart that contained the gun was sitting outside of the structure. And a guy stated this before, that means a low level of supervision um, for the armorer, for the assistant director, whenever they grabbed that weapon and they brought it in. How do they know? Now, if let's say that cart was closer to the set where, or, or closer to where the director sits, okay, he can keep an eye on it. There's more people supervising it. Now, there's also more potential for people to move it around, but I think that the counterfactual works stronger here, that if the gun is there in, in, in plain view where everybody gathers, okay, it's less likely for, for somebody to horse around with it. Whereas in this situation, the gun was outside the structure. There's probably light supervision. I mean, the armorer is probably inside at the set. I don't know how it is not a role that the armorer has eyes on those weapons 24-7. I mean, that's the whole reason for that individual to be there. 
And there should be something in place where the gun's opened, look, the ammunition is looked at, and then handed to the actor. Also, I don't think an assistant director should be the one handing the weapon to the actor. The armorer, what's the point of having an armorer if the armorer isn't the one handing the weapon? It, it's just incredible here. Now, you know, those two individuals likely are the most culpable if there are going to be criminal charges. But uh, given what I've read and learned a little bit that, you know, when an actor shoot, fires or discharges, pulls the trigger on a weapon like this, that they should ensure that no individual should be in the line of fire. And I, I don't know if that's possible on a movie set, but I don't see why it wouldn't be, okay? Uh, <coughs> especially in 2021. You know, you can move an angle just a little bit. Cameras, you can do all kinds of tricks with cameras. But I don't, you know, I'm not a, a an actor. I've never worked on a movie scene, so I don't really know. Um, it, but the Warren itself it, it is pretty interesting here. Um, I think you can probably drop this down to three individuals who could face liability, criminal liability, the armorer, the assistant director, and Alec Baldwin, unless... Somebody else fudged around with those weapons that we don't know about. Now, I also heard that those weapons were used by other crew members to go to shooting ranges and shoot for fun. How absurd and ridiculous is that? How absurd is that? If you go to a gun range, you can rent one of the guns there. To take these weapons that are being used on a movie scene to go and shoot for fun is truly unbelievable. One other factor in this case could be that if the family of Helena Hutchins doesn't want to pursue criminal charges, then they, it would, they, the police and, and the district attorney would be less likely to do so. But I believe they would be justified for those three actors that I stated under involuntary manslaughter. I'm sticking with my prediction that Baldwin will be charged in some way or some form. I may in fact be wrong about that. Okay. I don't feel as confident in it as I did before after reading about other cases and similar situations. Okay. But I'm sticking with it. And my prediction may be wrong, but I'm telling you, I, it got a little bit weaker, but I'm going to stick with it for now. Okay, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed running through the search warrant. We learned a little bit, had a little bit of fun here. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on this story. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Joe the Lawyer, breaking down the news, legal analysis, and providing legal information to the public. I am your friendly neighborhood lawyer. Thank you very much.